So we are done with all the CRUD operations and we have also seen how to test them in Fiddler. Now let us move towards little advanced topic and try to understand the web API life cycle. Say I'm accessing web API from my browser. I'm accessing my web API with the help of a URI, which is going to hit a method in the action. So say I have an action with me. that is get so a method is nothing but action and this class is controller so department is a controller and get is an action now i want to access this i want to get all the department so how do i do that i do it with the help of a url or uri so i say api slash department so how does it maps to this get because internally the method I'm using is get. So first of all, my request goes to IIS. My request in the sense, my request message, which contains URI method, header and body. We have seen all these things in our earlier video. So it will go to IIS. So here as of now it is IIS express. Now this request will be passed to my HTTP message handler. So it is going to handle the message and converting it to a strongly typed message. So basically my HTTP message handler is the base class and it is going to be implemented by delegating handler. So my messages will be handled by HTTP message handler. Now it is the job of HTTP message handler to pass this message to the action or invoke the action get method. Now once it invokes the method, it will return the result. So that is my response message. Again, it will be handed over to HTTP message handler and HTTP message handler will then pass it to your IIS and IIS will response to the client or my browser the original message. Now the beauty about HTTP message handler is that I can simply send a response from here itself. So I have control in my delegating handler. If I want I can push this request or this message to the action or I can create a response here itself and pass it to the client. So whatever you see in black color is the request message and whatever you see in maroon color is the response message. So here you have a strongly typed HTTP request message. I call it as HTTP request message. So whatever I send to the service or my web API is HTTP request message or a strongly typed HTTP request message and whatever it returns, whether it is list of objects or a single object or a single variable or void or exception, anything, whatever it is going to return, it is HTTP response message. So my complete web API talks in terms of HTTP request message and HTTP response message. Now let us see what does this HTTP request message contains. It contains the content, content type, content length we have seen. In our recent video, we have set the content type to JSON. So it contains the header. So content type, we set it in headers. It contains method which is important. So whatever I'm making in bold is the important thing that is headers and method, the type of request, whether it is get, post, put or delete. It contains some properties. It contains request URI. So that URL is called as URI. So URL is subset of URI. And it contains the version we have seen. We tested with HTTP 1.1. So these are the things that your request message contain. 
the major things are headers method and request uri so these are the major things now http response message what does it contain again it contains the content type that we are sending it contains the header it contains a flag is success status code whether it is true or false if your operation is successful it will be true if your operation is not successful then it will be false it contains a reason phrase if it is false then why it also contains status code this is very very important the status code now what is status code we will see that in our next slide it contains version and it also contains the same request message in response so that the client can work with request message if needed after it receives response now let us try to understand the status code now we are very much interested in response messages as of now so my response message is nothing but a status code now i have various status codes we call it as http response code if my response code is 200 then the status is okay so here we have enum data type called as http status code dot you can get all the codes so here i have listed some frequently used status codes 200 201 is for created if i'm inserting a record then i can send the status code as created no content if my return type is void so basically you can use it for your delete or update methods bad request so the data that i'm getting is not valid so we use bad request say whenever there is a validation error we have unauthorized 401 this is for authentication and authorization we have not found 404 i'm looking for a record if that record is not available then i'll send not found 500 so internal server error so some error that we are not sure about so normally we call it as unhandled exception so for any kind of error which is not explicitly explained to the client then it will be an internal server error if you want more about these codes you can visit this link and you'll get a lot of codes which are available so these are the majorly used codes